greatest recruiting opportunity right now is the fact that we've got the NER settlement and most agents are working for office leaders and brokerages that have done nothing to address this. And they are scared to death because they know their livelihoods at risk. And everybody's just kind of marching down this, this you know, <laughs> death sentence till August 17th when this thing implements. And then everybody's going to be like, oh my God, what do I do? Welcome back to the Agent Goldmine. Here is what to expect in today's show. Recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. If you are at all interested in recruiting, maybe you are a team leader or a broker owner, or maybe you are an agent in an organization that has downlines, this is a really smart episode strategically and tactically on how to recruit agents into your world. We also touch on the different types of teams, pros and cons of each, and the biggest mistakes that people are making in lead generation right now. Today's guest is Jim Rumley. He is a freaking badass. He's been in real estate since he was 19. And this is now at least 30 years later. So you're like, old guy, he probably doesn't know what he's talking about. Maybe he's dated in his information. Absolutely not. Like the dude is on fire. I freaking love talking to him. This is multiple times now that I've had the opportunity to interview him. And it's just always a fucking treat. <laughs> Forgot which podcast I was on, whether or not I could swear. So yeah, you guys, you're going to notice a big gap in my heart and soul today because Allie was freaking here. She tried to be here in the beginning. She's like, keeps poking her head in. Maybe you'll see her if you're watching on YouTube. The girl's internet is just dog shit. And so she ended up having just to leave me completely hanging. So yeah, go over to her Instagram, Allie the Agent, and just tell her shame on you for leaving her fucking bestie hanging. But it's okay, guys. I held it down while crying in between each sentence because of her absence. Anyway, that is all I have, guys. Gold miners, welcome. Jim Renly. Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. All right, Jim. So recruiting is a part of the business that people hardly ever consider, think about, or maybe when they do, they just start cringing because it's something that most people don't want to talk about. But if you think about growing a real business in the long term, recruiting is such a big part of it. And I, you are the man when it comes to this. So let's start from the very ground and build the way up. So talk to me about recruiting. Well, the first thing for people that are just starting to recruit, there's kind of a natural, I would call it a stumbling block that a lot of people hit. And then they they kind of have a problem and then they stop recruiting altogether. And I'll, I'll walk you through it. And I, I was, I suffered for, uh, for this for the first five years I was owning a brokerage. What I would do every month is I'd rent a conference room. I'd market the heck out of this career seminar. And then I get people to come to the career seminar talk to them about getting their real estate license. And then I would, because I did a pretty good job in the seminar, I get five or 10 people that say, yeah, I want to get my license. I would hire maybe one or two of those people, three or four, if I was lucky, but usually one or two a month. And I grew my business pretty quickly doing that. But here was the problem. The problem with recruiting new agents is that there's an 87% attrition rate in this industry. So, you know, you've got a problem right there. So you, you put all, doesn't matter how good, by the way, you can have the you can be the best trainer, the best mentor, the best coach, have the best technology, the best branding, all those things. You say, and we all egotistically think, well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna beat the odds. You're not gonna beat the odds. I didn't beat the odds. You're not beating the odds. No one's beating the odds. It's an 87% percent attrition rate. This has nothing to do with you. It's about what they're doing or not doing. So at the end of the day, and this is within the first two years, you're left with out of recruiting 10 agents, you're left with two agents. And of the two that are left with you, one of them is going to say, well, I started with you, so I'm going to look and see if the grass is greener somewhere else. So now you're left with one agent out of 10, and you put all this time and effort and energy into helping these people succeed, and they're all gone. So you've got to let go of that. It feels good to get uh, new agents in. And a lot of people that come to me for the first time, because I do brokerage coaching and I specialize in this, they come and they say, Jim, I'm recruiting five agents a month. And I say, okay, let's break that down. Of the five, how many are new? Well, four are new. So <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Not that we all were, we we're all new agents at some point, but we're the exceptions to the rule. The people that are watching this podcast, people that are on the podcast, we're exceptions. So you got to say, what's my alternative? My alternative is recruiting experienced agents. And that's what I teach. 
okay, I can get behind that totally. And I think part of the reason why that might, might struggle people who are recruiting soon is that they're like, I'm a relatively new agent myself and I don't have the experience. Therefore, of course, the only person I want to talk to is new agents because they're the only ones I actually feel confident around. The other ones are going to call me out and be like, you haven't done shit. (laughs) Why would I listen to you? So I guess before we jump into actually, and I am so excited to talk into recruiting experienced agents, but do you have any advice for people who might be in that particular situation? When they're just starting out and they're relatively new themselves and they're going to start recruiting? Right. So it... The way to think about this is it's just like selling a luxury house and you've never owned a luxury house, right? There's been a st- I, I, t- I taught a class called the Accredited Luxury Specialist uh, course, and that was a whole concern. When you take this class, you feel like I'm the emperor with no clothes on. I've never owned a million dollar house. So what business do I sell selling million dollar houses, right? I, I have no experience in that. The people that are buying these houses don't care. <laughs> they, they don't care that you don't have the experience. All they care about is the end result. They're getting a beautiful house. And then you're doing a good job through the process. The same thing is true with recruiting experienced agents. Most people that are being recruited by you are going to not understand that you're not going to be at their level. You're not necessarily a 10 or 20 or 30 or $50 million agent. What they care about is themselves. And what are the benefits you're stacking up? What can you provide to them that will help them at the end of the day, close more transactions or make their life easier? And that's, by the way, when people say, Jim, why should I come work for you? My answer to that is always the same. It is, there's only two reasons you should go to work for anybody, me included, is either A, I can help you close more transactions every year, or B, I can make your life easier. I think I can do both, but I need 20 minutes of your time to give you a presentation. Can't do it over the phone, you gotta be in person. And then we then we have a conversation. So you, you gotta let go of this idea that you have to be a, a superstar realtor. You don't, you just gotta be really good at relationships. The best recruiters relational. They're really, really good at building relationships. And I'll give you one more example of that. You can you can apply this. I like to put brokerage owners and team leaders into the position of, I'm an NBA coach. I'm an NFL team owner. I'm an NHL team owner. The NHL coaches and the NBA coaches or owners aren't the guys that are on the court and they probably have never been NBA players, yet they own the, they own the organization. It's the same thing. We don't have to be the, the, the best players. We've just got to be able to sell the story and build relationships with people. Dude, that is such a good analogy that I have never heard. Because the luxury one, like that is also a really good analogy. But the NFL, NBA coach, having never actually played, I'm like, damn. Okay, very powerful. Yeah. Very true. So h- hypothetically, they've, and by the way, they still have way more objections. So that's really, like, I don't know how to talk to them. I don't know what to say. But we're not going to, we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to get back to Let's just say, you know, someone is interested in recruiting and they've agreed with what you said about the newbie agents. They're ready to go for a more experienced agent. How? How do yeah. they do that? Where do they find them? What do they say? All the things. So starting point is you got to, just like when we're, when we're coaching agents to start lead generating, and it's exactly the same thing. You got to look at this as, this is lead generation. It's exactly the same process of having a sphere of influence of farming in an area. It's exactly the same process. You just got to apply it to recruiting. So the recruiting. I'm going to identify a target audience. What's my target agent I'm looking for? It's not the whole MLS. I don't want to recruit everybody. I'm just targeting a specific group of people. If you're just starting out, I would recommend, and this is what I recommend when I'm coaching folks, brokerages and team leaders, is that we're targeting maybe a group of two, three, four, five hundred agents if you got a really big market, but two to three hundred agents minimum. And most of the time, I'm going to say it's people that are two to ten million dollars in production. This is a good starting point for you. And if you say two to ten million dollars in production, here's the idea. If I can help bring one of these people into my team or my or my office, and I can take them from two million to four million, now they're raving fans. They're my best advocates. They're super fans. They're going to recruit for me. They're going to be my my best recruiters. Or I can help them get from four million to eight million, or eight million to sixteen million. I'm going to turn them into into rock star recruiters for me. So that's the starting point. Identify your target audience. Then behind that, I've got to create a communication matrix. What's going to be my my communication with all these people? right? What's that going to look like? And that's going to be a combination of styles. It's going to be phone calls. It's going to be texts. It's going to be emails, personal emails and bulk emails. It's going to be video texts, which is what a lot of recruiters are not doing yet that they need to start doing. It could be educational events and or mixer type events. And it's just a whole group of things that we're doing. So we're mapping those contacts out, just like we tell agents to do. Get my big ass calendar above my desk. I'm mapping all my contacts out and I'm taking the time to recruit, recruit, recruit. And I'm investing one eighth of my day, one hour a day in recruiting 
will unlock amazing results. You just got to get into it. Okay. So I have my target audience, the two to $10 million yes. producers. And I yes. understand the communication, I guess. Am I, are these cold calls? Am I pulling a roster from the MLS? I guess, where am I finding these people and how am I originally bringing them into my world so I can ping them with all of these things? Great, great questions. So the easiest thing is to go to MLS and then just do that search of two to $10 million producers and you're going to find them, right? Last 24 months, last 12 months, not actually not 24 months, 12 months. That's the production model. And I'm going to pull those people out and I'm going to be looking at their, I'm going to put them in my database, name, email address, phone number, all the data, right? And then, then the question is, okay, what do I do? <laughs> What's my first step? So if you are just putting yourself in a position of a team leader or a broker owner, all of the team leaders and broker owners that are listening to me right now, I want you to think about over the last 12 months, how many agents in your market have made a move to another company and you were surprised. You're like, I can't believe those people made the move. And they didn't come and talk to you, right? And you go, yeah, there's a ton of people that didn't come talk to me. Question mark for all of you listening is, why didn't they come talk to you? The reason why they didn't come talk to you is because you did not open the door for that conversation. They didn't know you were attracted to them as an agent. And this is the number one thing we have to do. So with our two, three, four, 500 people, every single one of those people on the roster has to know that Jim Remley at ABC Real Estate is attracted to them as an agent and would love to have a conversation about them coming to work for me. That's opening the door. So now if they get to a place, and by the way, every single, every, every single experienced agent will tell you the same thing. They'll say, Jim, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm never leaving. Happy, 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 happy. I'm never leaving, never leaving, never leaving. But here's what happens. They're all happy till they're not, right? They're happy, happy, happy until they get mad at their broker, until they have a technology failure, until they get mad at somebody else in the office, until something goes wrong. They didn't get the commission plan that they wanted. And then suddenly they are ready. They are triggered. It's the zero moment of truth, which we never know what that's going to happen. The Zmont, we call that. And then we are there and we got our arms out and we're saying, we're ready to talk to you, ready to have a conversation. But it can't be that that conversation happens today. It's happened over the last six months. It's happened over the last year. So I've opened the door. So I'm going to give you an example of you, Shelby. So if I was, you are on my recruiting list, I would say, Shelby, and this may be a text. It could be, hey, Shelby, I just saw your social media post this morning. This is Jim Remley over at ABC Real Estate. I just want to say that was really impressive and you're getting a ton of engagement. Good job with your social skills. I'm just, I'm just super impressed. That's it. Now you're going to be like, oh, that was nice. What a nice guy Jim is. He's really, you know, taking the time to notice. And I am, and it's true, and it's genuine, and it's authentic. I did notice because I'm watching. Now that's the starting point. I'm building relationships. Hey, Shelby, I saw you took a listing this week, and I, I've got to say I'm super impressed with whoever your videographer is because the videos are amazing. Or, hey, Shelby, I noticed you closed the transaction over at whatever street. Can I ask you a quick question about that closing? And you're going to say, yeah. You're going to say, Hey, you know what? I've got a lot of my agents that are listing some properties and I'm just so impressed with how fast you got that sold. Was there anything that you did unique that made that property go? Or is it just all price? And you just in conversation. So what I'm getting into is I'm getting into relationship with people without saying one word about recruiting. The biggest challenge that recruiters have is they think they've got to come in for the jugular and start recruiting out of the gate. And the way the, the absolute wrong tactic is for me to call you and say, Shelby, this is Jim over at ABC Real Estate. I'd love to come to have, have you come over and talk to me about come to work for me. And you'd be like, no, thanks. Click. And then you're never going to want to take my call again. You're going to run. And there's some offices, some brands, some franchises even that train their agents to aggressively recruit in exactly the wrong way. And it pushes people to the, to the other side, right? And you've got to be trained and you got to be coached to do it the right way. So it's all about relationship building. Man, it's maybe we've heard that once or twice before in this industry. Hmm. <laughs> Shockingly <laughs> familiar to anyone who's looking to lead generate. Wow. Right. So it sounds like, okay, you've pulled the list, you have the list in your database, but then at that point, at some point, you are finding them on social media and following them, friending them, because it seems like a lot of yeah, the examples. I'm gonna follow them. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So that's a party process. So you, you look at social media and look at yeah, like a CRM. So you're just watching what they're doing and seeing what's happening. I might wait to friend them until I've had conversation with them, you know, but there's a lot of opportunities for us. We are, you know, all of us as recruiters should be attending MLS events. 
realtor board events, and we're, we're, you know, we're shaking hands and kissing babies. We're a politician in that case, and we're creating interactions, right? We're having conversations. And after that conversation, then it's much more natural for me to friend them or follow them on social media, right? So you just got to pick, pick your path of, of, you know, at what point does that feel comfortable? And here's a, the, the biggest thing is when does it feel authentic? When does it feel like it's the right moment? I'll give you a, another simple, simple strategy that I've encouraged my offices to do for years. And it's an absolute winner is that every time we have a closing, uh, we'll say to the, our own agent, hey, how was that closing experience with Shelby? Did she do a good job? And they'll say, yeah, she did a great job. Great. Do you mind if I reach out to her and just see if she'd be a, a good fit for our office? Yeah, do it. She was fantastic. So I call you, Shelby. I say, Shelby, I just want to say thank you for closing a transaction with our company. I talked to Bobby. He said he did an amazing job. Super impressed with your work ethic. I know you guys had a little challenge there in the middle, but you got through it. Listen, if there's any, ever an opportunity, I would love to take you to lunch or coffee and tell you about what we're doing over here at ABC. Even if today's not the right time, I want you to know that door is wide open. Okay. And now you know. And yeah, you, yeah, you know, the door again, opening doors. That's what it's all about. Opening, opening, opening doors. Then once we got that door open, then it's about stacking value. And we're going to start stacking value, stacking value, stacking value, stacking value. What I'm doing there is I'm weighting the scale. So what I'm doing is I'm weighting the scale by saying, I have this proprietary and unique thing that your office doesn't have. And they're going to say, well, I'm still staying with my office. Well, I've got this other thing. We have that's unique and proprietary that your office doesn't know. I'm still saying where I'm at. And I keep weighting the scale so that the trigger for them to get mad or get upset with where they're at or to get pushed over the edge, they get closer and closer and closer to the edge every time I'm giving them another stack of that benefit stack. So that's what I'm doing. I'm stacking, stacking, stacking to get them closer and closer to that edge. And that's where something will happen and they're going to come talk to me. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. Okay. Okay. So this first part with the relationship building, there is, depending on the situation, a lot of patience and emotional intelligence and timing and having to be able to sense how the other person feels about the interaction. So that's again, so much like real estate, but I also, I really love what you did there with the cross sale and then the flattery because seriously, if someone called me and was like, Hey, you know, I'm the broker of the agent you just did across with. I just want to reach out, heard amazing things. You know, I would just be like, who me? You what? You know, and I I'd be like, oh, you want to talk to, you know, even if I don't want to be recruited, like everyone loves to be told they did a great job. Yeah. Anyway, okay. So love that you were opening doors. And then because this was my next question, you kind of hit on it. I was like, at what point are you converting from that relationship, purely relationship piece, into a more specific a opportunity to stack the value. So in the example you gave with the flattery, that makes sense that like perfect segue, you know, if there's ever an opportunity, I'd love to take you coffee, love it. But I guess with the more situational with the social media, Hey, love what video you, I don't know. Do you have any, what are your door opening techniques to start talking about opportunity? You got to pick the path, right? When it, when you feel it's appropriate and it makes sense, but you also got to close at some point, right? You can't just be, it can't just be relational because then you're just a good friend every day, which is better than most office leaders do and most team leaders do, but you definitely gotta, at some point, ask the question. It, and here's what it comes down to. You gotta understand when you have rapport and trust with yourself. We've all walked into a car lot, not to pick on car salespeople, because I've got some friends of mine that sell cars, but when you walk onto a car lot and they attack, and then they start selling way too early. You've all, we've all felt a salesperson start selling way too early. And we feel like, whoa, get away from it. That's what happens with most recruiters. They start recruiting way, way, way too early. And it's not natural and organic. So we guys got to pick our path. And that's when you know, you know it's the right time when you have trust and rapport built. And that trust and rapport 
is when you and I, Shelby, can have a free-flowing conversation that doesn't feel awkward. If you and I can have a free-flowing conversation that doesn't feel awkward, I'm probably there. I can probably say, hey, you know what? I know I've never asked you this, but I would love to have a chance to sit down with you and just show you what we're doing in our company and walk you through the benefits of package. Now, the biggest thing here, though, is when I've got before that meeting, just like an agent in the field, I've got to have ready a actual recruiting presentation. Here's the biggest mistake that office leaders make is they go, I'm going to start recruiting. They've got no presentation of value. They've got no idea what they're selling. And the only thing they're selling is their commission plan. And if you're recruiting just based on your commission plan, you, everybody's listening to me here just loud and clear, you will lose because somebody's going to come in under your commission plan next tomorrow morning, next week, you're offering a $5 uh, cap. Somebody's going to give up on a $4 cap. You're offering a $3 cap. Somebody's giving them a 250 cap. You coming in with the lowest commission plan is a death sentence for brokers. So you got to get away from that. You got to say, aside from my commission plan, what are the 10 reasons? And here's the challenge for everybody listening. What is the 10 reasons somebody should come to work for your company? And that's, that's where you build your recruiting presentation. Just like a listening presentation, it's a PowerPoint digital visual presentation that's impressive and gets people excited. So that, that's the thing. And I will say, uh, in terms of opening doors, we have an opportunity right now that is the greatest recruiting opportunity over the last probably 10 years. The greatest recruiting opportunity right now is the fact that we've got the NER settlement and most agents are working for office leaders and brokerages that have done nothing to address this. And they are scared to death because they know their livelihoods at risk. And everybody's just kind of marching down this, this you know, <laughs> death sentence till August 17th when this thing implements. And then everybody's going to be like, oh my God, what do I do? Well, guess what? If you are on top of this, if you got a, if you work, if you're a team leader or broker owner that's way ahead of this, you're coaching your agents, you're training your agents, you've got an amazing buyer presentation, you're walking people through buyer representation agreements, you're having commission conversation scripts that you're put, putting together for your team, you're doing role plays, you know, you're ahead of the curve. This is what you recruit to. So now I might call you Shelby and I might say, Shelby, hey, we just put together, I really respect you, you're one of the number one buyer agents in the freaking community, you're crushing it. But I, I have to tell you, we just put together a whole buyer presentation because we want to get ahead of the curve for the NAR settlement. Because you're so good at buyers, I don't know if you'd be open to it, but I'd love to sit down with you and share with you what we built and get your honest feedback, get your opinion on what we built. Now, opinion marketing, all, you know, we're all trained to do this. This is a great thing. People love to give their opinions, right? Dude, that one is so good. The feedback or the opinion. Because originally where I thought you were going with this was like, hey, do you want to sit down and I'll, I'll teach you? But if you really want to yeah. play to someone's flattery and ego, you ask for the opinion and the feedback because then you're not like, oh, I know more than you. Here's how you do it. It's yeah. more, I respect you. I know you're you're good at what you do and I would love for us to get stronger together. 100%. Beautiful. 100%, right? And then you can also flip it over too. If, if you're a strong buyer's agent in the market, I might say, you know, uh, Shelby, we're doing a class. We're teaching a class uh, on helping our agents get ready for the NAR settlement. And we're, we're training everybody to do buyer representation agreements. I think you're probably already doing them. Would you be on a panel in our class? And people are like, you can put me on a panel in your office? I say, yeah, I respect you. This is just going to be an open panel. So now, again, I'm just stroking your ego because I think you're a top producing agent. And this all comes from a place of, of truth, of authenticity. Right. I, right. I really believe this about you, right? Okay. So... Looping it back real quick, I want to talk more about the NAR settlement in just a little bit, but real quick on that presentation, because even from the very yeah. beginning, when you said that you'll be able to help them close more transactions or and make their life easier, yes. you're like, I can do both. And you said it with such confidence. And I just know that there's so many people out there looking to recruit that are like, I mean, I actually don't know. I don't know if I can do those things and I want them to come over and I think we're going to, you know, and so I guess, could you talk to me? Maybe I am still that agent you're trying to to attract recruit or whatever. What what? Yeah. How are you so confident that you can help me close more and make my life easier? So I'm confident because I've been doing it for 30 years. But if you if you're just starting out and you're like, hey, I don't have 30 years of experience, Jim. Thanks, but you know I'm not you. Here, here you got to come into it with a an idea of what is your plan, right? And you can sell a plan and you can sell a vision of what you're building. So your vision is powerful. And I'll give you a classic example, it's, and it's related to recruiting. We built an office in Ashland, Oregon, tiny little, tiny little town in Ashland, Oregon. And when we decided to put an office there, we went and landed a little tiny 1,200 square foot space, tiny space. And we started talking to, with a lot of my friends' helps, 
we went out and started talking to the top agents in that community. And this is a luxury kind of dominated community, kind of a church community. And I just started saying, hey guys, we're building something different. And I want to tell you about it and see if it resonates with you. And I'd also love your feedback on what we're building. We're going to do kind of a coffee shop style office. You're going to come in big screen TVs, espresso machine. It's not going to feel like an office. It's going to feel like an, a, just a place, a space to hang out, talk real estate. We're going to have all the nicest listings on the, you know, in the area coming up on the big screens. And when I started talking to top producing agents, we recruited 20 agents before we opened the door, 20 top producing agents into a 1200 square foot space because we were able to sell a vision we hadn't actually built yet, but it was coming. You can do the same thing if you say, listen, I've got a lead gen platform that I'm putting together and I'd love to plug in and have some foundational players that I know this lead gen is going to crush this lead gen system I'm building out. I'd love for you to be a part of this kind of foundational program we're putting together. Or I've got this coaching program or this training program I'm putting together. You know, we're focusing on a specific area of the market, a niche area of the market. If you have passion and you can relate that passion and you have a plan behind your passion, people will buy into that. They will absolutely want to come along for the ride. They're excited about it. What they want is they want leadership. Most places that these agents are sitting at now, the leadership is zombie-like. They're just like going through the motions. There's no real path of progress. There's no real path forward. There's no game plan. There's no passion. So if you can bring that, you're going to, you're going to really, um, I think, knock it out. Uh, so, but here, I, I want everybody to hear this really loud and clear though. As a manager, broker, owner, leader, team leader, your number one uh, goal and the number one way you measure your performance is one key number. It is per agent productivity. So per agent productivity maps in all of your recruiting, all of your retention, all of your marketing, all of your branding, all your SEO, your website, your services, everything maps out inside that metric per agent productivity. So you need to know, number one, where are you today? So if I went to, if you're going to start with my brokerage coaching, I would say, okay, Jim, where is your number today? What in the last 12 months, what's your average agent done? And you do, if you don't know that number, you're not really running your company. You've got to know your number. So you should say, yeah, it's six. My average agent is closing six deals. By the way, that would be three X the national average, <laughs> which is terrible, but that's true. So six, let's say it's six. A lot of, there's a couple of national franchises that are at six, by the way. So let's say it's six. Now you can say, who's the, in, in your market, who's number one in per agent productivity? You need to know that number. Well, they're 10. Okay, now we got a gap. We got to get from our office from six to 10. How are we going to do it? And we create a plan, a path to progress. And that's the key. And as, as you're climbing up, you can just look downward and you can say, I'm at seven, but there's 25 offices below me that are at two or three. Those are my number one recruiting targets because we're already producing more than them on average. So there's a lot of techniques there when it comes to recruiting. I know I, I talked a long time. <laughs> Sorry. Jim, I count on it. I love it. Whenever I talk to you, I'm like, this is great. I can ask three questions because <laughs> I'll get all the answers. But in it, you know, some people ramble in a way where you're like, oh, please stop. That's never the case with you. I really do Thank you. love everything that you have to say. Okay, more questions. So yeah. I'm thinking now, because you were talking about the manager, broker, owner, what are your thoughts on traditional teams and the idea of recruiting while you're in production, while you're still building, what, what have you seen in your experience? What are your thoughts on it? Anything. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. So with a team, as a team leader, you got to decide what kind of team you're building, right? So there's teams that are uh, building because they want to basically own a mini brokerage. And that mini brokerage model of a team is that they want to have as many team members as possible because they're going to run it like a brokerage. They're going to get a little split of everybody's deals and they're going to make money that way. And that's a great model. People can crush it with that. If that's your model, then you then a part of your day, and again, it goes back to the one eighth of your day, then one hour of every day should be spent on recruiting. And again, you got to go through the same formula. You got to say, what is it that's going to attract these agents? 
let me give you a, a mistake. And I'm, this is really important for the team leaders to hear me on this. I'm going to give you a classic mistake that's being made, and it's a giant one right now by team leaders across the country. And that is five years ago, seven years ago, when you were building teams out, you could have a model that looked like this. The model would be, I'm going to, I'm going to hire buyer's agents, and then I'm going to go to Zillow, and I'm going to buy leads from Zillow. And when I get these leads, I'm going to hand them to the buyer's agents, and the buyer's agent is going to grind through the 100 leads to get one deal, right? And then they're going to get that one deal. They're going to close it. I'm going to get a split of that deal. And I could create an ROI, a return on my Zillow investment that made me money. I may make 20%. I might make 10%, 15%, whatever. But there was a spread there to make money. That spread, everybody hear me loud and clear, is gone. You cannot make money as a team leader buying leads and then handing them to a buyer's agent. There, it just doesn't work anymore. So in fact, there's a negative 32% return. So every time you buy a lead, for a hundred dollars, you're losing hundred and thirty-two dollars. So it is a money pit that will take you right into the grave as a team leader. You got to get rid of that. So then you got to say, okay, as a team leader, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to have to pivot. And the faster you, a lot of you are resisting it. A lot of you are hearing me like, I don't want to do it. You got to do it. So that means you got to figure out another way to generate leads. The number one way you attract agents into a team is you got to be able to hand them leads. And I know nobody likes to hear this, but it's true. If I'm a great lead generator, I'm not coming to work for a team. That's just three hours. I'll go out. I'll be a solo agent. So your your value to me when I'm coming onto the team is a couple things. Number one, you're going to give me leads. Number two, you're going to plug me into systems and mentorship. And the number three thing is because I'm on a team, I might be able to actually take some time off and have some weekends because got other team members that are covering me, and I might have staff support. So there's four or five of the reasons, but leads are the number one reason. So that's a different model than necessarily a brokerage model. Although I'm going to tell you that the most successful brokerages I'm seeing in terms of recruiting today are doing exactly the same thing. They're the ones that are delivering actual leads to their, uh, to their agents, and they're the ones that are attracting the most agents. So, and just, I'm going to just one side point on leads really quickly. There's a difference between cold leads, what's called a Zillow lead, and a curated lead or an appointment set. A curated lead means that somebody on your team is curating, basically nurturing these leads to the point where it's a handoff to an agent in the office. That's a curated lead. It's not the grinding through 100 to get to one deal. Maybe it's grinding through 10 to get to one deal instead. And it's a high, much higher close rate. And then the appointment center is something that's actually setting appointments directly for you and you're just going on the appointment. So those are the best. That's like the gold level. That's the gold standard. So you just got to decide what are you building up? What's going to really attract agents to join your team? But again, it gets down to value. What's your value proposition? Okay, just to make sure I cover each side of my brain. So there's, you know, in the beginning you mentioned what type of team are you building? Are you building the mini brokerage where you bring on as many team members as possible? And do we do we talk about the other type? What is the Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So there's definitely other types. I mean, the other types of will be a kind of a small team group, which will be maybe a specialized group that maybe has a team leader, a buyer's agent, a transaction coordinator, and maybe an admin person. And it's more of a small team where they're just trying to create as much production out of that group as possible. They don't want 45 people working for them. They just want their four or five or three or four people in that in that group. Does that mean you're never recruiting? Not necessarily, because in my experience, the average length of tenure for a team member is about two years. Uh, so if you guys say to yourself, well, even on a small group, even if I only have two or three agents working for me, the reality is, is that every two years I got to replace these people. So here's the way to look at it when you're building out a team is that you got to say, I, I need to have a bench. And the way to look at it is I have, a, I have senior team members and I have junior team members. The juniors are coming in and they're eventually probably going to replace the seniors as they exit, the, exit me and become a solo agent or build their own teams out. Every, every team leader you talk to is, oh, these people will never leave me. It's just like broker owners. <laughs> at some point, they may leave you. So you just got to understand that. So that's, it's a little bit of a different model. It's not a mass number. It's you're, you're just pushing through people through. There's another uh, type of uh, team out there, too, that is a team leader. And this a lot of team leaders are going to be excited when I talk about this, is that wants to exit production. A team leader that says, you know what? The reason I have a team is because I don't want to work so hard. And what they, what they forget is as soon as they start the team, they're like, holy crap, this is harder than it was just being a solo agent. This is so much work. I can't even, it's just crazy. I'm running this massive business now. And so all of them are like, I want to exit production. Every time I talk to a team leader, tell me if I exit production. There's only, and then here's the mistake they make. They're like, 
the way to exit production is to hire a bunch more people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the the mini brokerage model, but that's not the solution because that just creates some more work. You're now you're managing more people. You're 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 just dealing with more more drama. So how you exit production as a team leader is number one, you've got to recruit a high level agent, and you've got to pay them a lot of money. Right? Let's call this your lead agent. Like the, your, your number one, your right hand, your XO. Who's the lead agent? What are you paying them? It's going to be a lot of money, more than you're comfortable paying. So this is an agent that is a top producing agent on the outside that wants to build their own team, but that doesn't want to go through the hassle, but would love to join your team and kind of take your place. This is going to be a $200,000, $300,000 a year investment for most team leaders that are trying to exit production themselves. You get, bring them in, you pay them, you, you, you work with them for a year or two, get them in position, and then they're making two or $300,000 a year. And then you're able to exit production. These, these eight, these team leaders, though, I'm going to tell you, and this is true, a lot of team leaders are cheap. <laughs> they're just cheap. And they don't want to pay that kind of, what are you talking about? I can't pay somebody two or $300,000. If you want to exit production, you're probably going to have to do that. Sorry, that's the reality. Mm-hmm. If you want them to take on all the responsibilities of you of running your team, they would just create their own team. They don't need to work for you to do that. So you got to pay them a lot of money to take that role. So there's a, a few different models out there. Totally. About the team leader, they're cheap, but also so many of them are poor. Like it looks from the outside looking in That's cool. who are, yes. yeah, they're like, oh my God, I'm closing all these deals and I have all these agents and they're closing all deals. But there's so much overhead between the office and whether they're in a brokerage, those splits, and then all of the systems that you have to pay for the access and then the lead generation, the marketing, the branding, the time. And the the manpower too, between transaction coordinators, VAs, even if you are using overseas, oh my God, they're poor. They're like 200, 300,000. You can't come out of your your for a while. Yeah, no, exactly. (laughs) Okay, very interesting. Random question. Have you seen any teams do like an employee instead of splits? Okay, so, and I'm curious to know what your perspective is on like the tra- traditional team split, you know, the Gary Keller millionaire real estate agent model, you know, with the 50, 50. And then there's so many people out there who are like, oh, I would never pay 50, 50. And then, you know, the, the team leaders are like, well, I can't afford not to pay, you know, charge 50, 50. And then, so have you ever seen anyone do kind of like an employee model where they have someone get licensed and then bring them in as an employee to essentially take the leads you know, set, do the traditional like agents job on a team, but as an employee instead of a split. Have you ever seen that? What are your thoughts? Yeah, we actually have one of those uh, teams that is in, within our company who's been, done it very successfully for many years. So that in that case, it's generally a, a salary base salary against commission zone, kind of, kind of very similar to a lot of other types of salespeople out there uh, in other industries. Um, so let's say you give them three grand a month against uh, their commissions. And then once they earn that money back, then they get a bonus uh, of the scale. So let's say the 3000 means you got to close one transaction a month to keep your job. That pays the 3000 Let's just say that's them. Uh, and then when you get to two transactions, it's not like you're getting another 3000 You're getting maybe $500 bonus for the second one, third transactions, another 500 So there's a bonus level above the first one that comes through the front door just to pay their salaries. But a lot of agents love the salary. They love the idea that they're going to get paid a set wage that they can count on every month. And then the rest is, you know, it's still incentivized. So you're out there still crushing it. And 3000 is a low number, but, you know, 5000 whatever the number is. But, you know, to pay somebody $5,000, $60,000 a year consistently as a team leader, you got to make sure they're producing, you know, and that they're actually crushing it. But it's no different when you think about it. It's, you know, Red, Redfin is a good example where they have salary-based employees. But also when you're hiring a, a TC or you're hiring an assistant, you're probably today having to pay them $25 an hour and if they're good or $22 an hour in a lot of markets, depends on your market area, you know? So it's getting up there now. I mean, it's starting to be a pretty big number to begin with. But to answer your question, yes, it's very, it's uncommon. It's very, very uncommon. I don't see it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just curious because I thought, so I, I had a, I had a way too big of a team, <laughs> which it wasn't even that huge. There were like about 30 agents on it and it was in two different markets and it was uh, a beast. It was a beast and I learned so much from it. But looking back, one of the things that I look at now, it's, you know, people get their license. Most of the majority of people get their license because they're like, I'm going to be a business owner. I'm going to 
I'm, I'm going to leave this job and I'm going to work on my time. And it's, you know, and so they come into this industry, I'm going to do it. And so the idea of being on a team where there's accountability, there's rules, there's split, someone else is taking my half, you know, of whatever, it just seems to be counterintuitive to the majority of the reasons why people get their license in the first place. So I've been thinking on this for years now. And I was like, well, what if, you know, they didn't already have that idea of I want to be my own business owner in their head when they got their license? What if it was like, you know, they were working another job and you're like, hey, I think you're amazing. And I have this opportunity here. And, and then when you go, yeah. I'll pay for your license. And so it was kind of like a different mindset going in. And so I was just super curious about your thoughts on all of that. Well, it's interesting, you know, our model is very inefficient. And so what happens is we have to have, you know, a 30 office, 30 agent team to get 10 agent level production, right? It's just, it, it, a lot of times it's, it's a very inefficient model that we have. And I do think that having salaries would make it much more efficient because it would be much more of an employee employer relationships. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. It's just, it's, it's the investment and in how much agents could invest and make that actually reality. Totally. Jeremy, I really feel like I could talk to you all day. I have one more, one more question, which is not about this that I'd love to pick your brain on. What are you seeing right now across the board in regard to lead generation that is in like a systemized way? Because before we, we talked on Rockstars, we talked about Facebook ads a little bit. You know, you've talked about Zillow from like kind of a techie way of consistently getting in front of people. Is there something that's exciting you? Yeah. At this point in time, what are you seeing that's exciting you on the landscape? Well, the thing, I think it's, it's like you have to, when you, when you start doing something, you got to stop doing something. And I think that's always a kind of a good thing as a coach. Okay. I'm going to start doing this, but you also got to decide at the same time, what am I going to stop doing? That doesn't work. Right. So if I can speak to that for a second, uh, what should I stop doing right now this year that I've been doing for years that absolutely doesn't work? And I'll give you a couple examples. I'll give you the solution. The first one is I should stop doing just listed postcards around my listings. They absolutely do not work. And they really haven't worked for years, right? And so like we spent all this money. We, we're always told to do this. Do a just listed postcard. But the reality is when somebody puts a sign on the lawn, in your, one of your neighbors, the first thing you can do is on your phone in three seconds, look that listing up go through a complete tour of the property. I don't need to wait for your black and white postcard to hit my door. You know, I don't need that information, right? I don't need to scan your QR code. I can go to Zillow, I can go to Realtor.com. So let me give you a solution that's crushing for our agents. That's super simple that everybody can do today. And that is when you're about ready to take a listing, it's not live, but you know the listing's coming. You do a little letter into the neighborhood, call it a hundred homes. And you say this, you say, hey, Jim Rumley, ABC Real Estate, I'm going to be taking a listing this week in your neighborhood. And that's the reason I'm reaching out. I've discovered a few really interesting points of data as I've done a market evaluation for this property that could affect your home's value. If you've ever thought about selling your home or you're curious about the home that's coming on the market, give me a call to find out what your home could sell for in today's market. And now you're you're using as curiosity marketing. First of all, the people were like, huh, I wonder what's neighbor selling. What's this interesting data this guy? I don't know what my home is being worth. So you're, you're using a lot of different techniques to open the door to curiosity, to them being curious about something rather than waiting for the listing to hit the live. So that's a super simple thing, but it, it's absolutely working. The other big thing I think in terms of lead generation, which most agents are doing, but they should start doing, is to start looking at AI for their, all their farm areas and anywhere you're going to do a mailing, your mailing should be ran through an AI system first. So in other words, let's say I identify 2,000 homes in a remarker. Before I start just mailing 2,000 letters, because that's expensive, I need to run those names, addresses, and emails through uh, an AI system that will tell me who of that group is the most likely sellers, and then I only target those sellers. That's, that's the gold standard for mailings now. And instead of having 1% uh, close rate, now you're going to jump that to 5 6 7%. It'll take your close rate much higher. Companies like Enscope that are out there that will do that for you. They had a great study. Uh, in Decanter, Illinois, where they took 35,000 homeowners records. They sped it through the system. They came back with, here's the 2,800 uh, people that we think are most likely to sell out of the 35,000. And then they came back a year later and they said, of the 2,800 people we identified, how many people actually listed their house? The answer was 436 that actually listed their house of the 2,000. So if you say, wow, what if I took my whole town and put it through the system and I identified a mailing area or mailing group of 2000 and I was able to have a potential of 400 listings. That's like game changing technology. 
And this is the stuff that's a lot of us are going to start to see with technology. You got to start to leverage it and you got to start to say, how can I implement it? AI, that's such a big topic and everybody gets lost in it, but you got to say, what's not on the bleeding edge of this, but what's on the cutting edge? What can I actually implement that will actually have impact in my business? And I think that's, that's something that if I was a team leader, broker, owner, or just a solo agent, that's the implementation. I got I, I, I'd be implementing that AI on the mailing side. Dude, that's so good. In scope. That's what you said? In scope. Yep. N, in. So sorry. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> N, N, as in no. N and then scope. Oh. S-K-O-P-E. So glad I asked. I was completely off. <laughs> Okay, Jim, what did what do we not talk about today that you might want to leave the listeners with kind of in summary? So here, I think the one thing to think about when you're building out your value proposition as a brokerage or team leader is think about this word as you're, as you're building out the 10 things that you think would attract an agent to your firm. Think about this word, proprietary. What's proprietary about what you do? And this is what every big company does when they're creating their value proposition is what's unique about what we do. And it doesn't mean that other companies don't have the same technology, right? Uh, it's how you're using the technology. It's how you're applying the strategy in your market. That the application and the strategy around the technology that you have is the key component, right? So we all, I'll give you a classic example. So we all have scripts. We're all training agents on scripts. But here's a great example of, you know, something different that's unique where you say, Hey, we do a, every Monday morning, we do a script class or we do a script role play where everybody comes into a room and we role play things. That alone, 99% of offices know that. So when you say you have something different, what's proprietary? That proprietary-ness, the more proprietary items you have, the more likely you're going to get people excited about coming to work with you. So get down to the nitty gritty and think about what's unique about your company. Love it. Okay. Wrap up questions. Number one, what, <laughs> what is your favorite location to intake information? Because Jim, you know so much, and I know you've been in the industry for 30 years, but everything that you know is not dated. It's very relevant. So where are you learning? I got a lot of places I pull data from. I, I use, of course, I'm on Inman like we all are, but I use NAR Economist blog is a great place where a lot of people don't go. I use Redfin's blog. I use Realtor.com's blog. They've got a lot of great content there. And then I'm also looking at just other industries. So I, you know, I subscribe to Wired Magazine and all the, the techie magazines, and I'm looking at other technology that could, you know, flow over to our industry. And that's been very successful. I find a lot of ideas. There. Okay. What events are you going to in the next 12 months? Uh, I haven't planned my schedule that far out, honestly. I'm, I'm speaking at a lot of events. So I was speaking at um, several of uh, my, I, all my brokerage coaching students, a lot of them hire me to come to speak in their local markets. So I just got back from uh, San Diego and I'm, I'm hoping to go out to uh, the East Coast here in the next uh, month. So I'm kind of going all over. So when I when I can, I'll slip in and try to go to a, an event if I can. Always NAR, you mentioned, is always a big one. The Gathering of Eagles, that if you're a brokerage owner, team leader, the Gathering of Eagles is with Real Trends. So that's a big expensive, but it's a great, a great place to go. And then Inman's conference is always good too as well. Okay. How can listeners help you in your business? Well, if anybody would like to hop on and check out our, our platform, we've got a platform called eRealEstateCoach.com and people can hop over there. They can take a whole recruiting seminar. It's two hours of the best ideas, strategies, scripts, text, emails, strip campaigns for recruiting, not just my ideas, but top recruiters from across the country. It's free. They can jump in there and just check it out if they'd like to check it out. And then, you know, if you've got an idea that I didn't cover today, which I'm sure there's a million of them, send me an email. I'd love to get your email. So if you go into that website, you can send me a, a, an email directly from the website. And of course, we're, our company is everywhere on all the social media platforms at e Real Estate Coach. So we're on TikTok and YouTube and, you know, Facebook and Instagram and everywhere else. Perfect. And that hits on my last question, which is where can people find you? So listeners, you just heard it That's from it. the man, the myth, the, and the legend. Also, of course, it's everything's going to be in the show notes. So you can just go when you're not driving and click on and shoot him a DM or whatever. And then also you guys know the drill. If you want to hang out with me and Allie, who was a total ghost this entire show, which I'll talk about in the intro, I guess she totally ditched. No, her internet went out. <laughs> anyway, you can, you can hang out with me and Allie. We are the Shelby show and Allie, the agent on the gram. Love hearing from you. And otherwise guys, be a bro and share this show. 
If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps.